as you begin to put that staff together, and it's a good one, um, no question about it. What what were you looking for in particular, uh, Arthur? I know you had guys that you'd worked with before, but I know that necessarily wasn't necessarily the prerequisite to finding guys that fit your staff for this particular team. Well, first, you know, as we were putting the staff together, it, 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 it was nice because everything kind of fell into place. A lot of times there's guys you want to get because of circumstances, you can't get them out certain teams. And it really fell into place. And what we were looking to do is, is, is a good mix of experience with some youth and kind of at every level, guys at a different stage of their career. So we did have that diversity of thought. And we want to be multiple and want to be very adaptive to, to all the, the schemes we're putting in. But foundationally, you know, hiring Dean was huge for us. And then when you add some of the experience we've got over there with John Hoke, Frank Bush, Ted Monachino, Gary Emanuel, those guys have coached a long time. And they, and they it's, you know, Dave's been with Ted. Ted knows that system inside and out. Frank's coached in multiple, so has John Hoke. So was Gary. And then we have some younger coaches that kind of supplement that. You know, Lanier Gothi, Matt Pease, uh, Nick Perry. And, and it's, it's a good mix of experience and, and youth. And, and guys have different backgrounds. We don't want guys just to be, you know, yes men. And then offensively, I've worked with Dave. I've worked with Dave in a couple of years. We, we talk a lot. And then, you know, hiring Dave for going was, was huge for me. You know, I'll still call the plays. But Dave does, helps organizing the offense so I can be with all three phases. Uh, really happy, excited about Dwayne Ledford. You know, uh, thought he was the top line coach in the country. He has a, a unique background too. He's been in a lot of spots as a player. He, you know, he, he even played over in NFL Europe. He's coached a lot of different stops and done a terrific job. We have shared, you know, aligned, we're aligned with, the, with, the, with how we see the wide zone run. He's got some good creative thoughts too. Uh, Chandler Henley is the assistant of the line we brought from Tennessee. It helps because at least there's one guy that has been with me, understands how I game plan how I like to organize things. That certainly helps. Dave Brock is a guy I've known for a long time. Uh, Dave actually coached me in college and was there when I GA'd. And Brock's been a head coach. It helps having Dave here. Des Kitchens is a guy I hadn't worked with, but Des had worked with Led. And we, you know, we were going through and the Zoom helped us talk to a lot of different people. And, and Des has a, a very unique background and, and Led was very comfortable. You know, he could vouch for him. At least you knew somebody that worked with him. Really happy Des is, Des is here. Justin Peel's another guy. I never worked with Justin, but knew a lot of people had and have become friends with him over the years, uh, kind of picking his brain when we were tight end coaches, kind of working the workout circuit. He was a former player here, really similar mindset to how I see the position, but has, again, coming from a very different offense. So he brings a fresh set of ideas. Uh, TJ Yates, another guy too, he's got a different set of ideas. He's been in the quarterback room. He's gonna help us with the pass game and be in the receiver room a little bit, be it with the tight ends. Really excited about TJ. And so as you go through the staff, there is diversity of thought. It's not everybody that just came with me for Tennessee and you hit print on the playbook. And then you get into special teams. And Marquise Williams, another guy I hadn't worked with, but came highly recommended. Went through the, the Zoom interview process, talked to a lot of people. And we're really, really excited about Marquise. And then, of course, Steve Hoffman, who I've been with, got a lot of experience. So we feel like we got that balance. Guys have been in our spot, but a lot of shared, shared values and really good teachers. Well, I, I, yeah, I, I'm extremely excited to watch you guys go to work together. I know you're already doing that. Uh, I, I guess the name that probably jumped off the map that hit the layman fan is Coach Pease, Dean Pease, who's been so successful in three different places, New England, Baltimore, and in Tennessee. Um, I guess the the what people want to know is how did you get him to come back in retirement again, Coach? What did you, how did you get him to come? Back? I know he loves the coach, but you got him to come out of retirement for a second time. He did, you know. It's 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 an old joke. If, I always feel like if somebody coaches past sixty, they never fully retire. I mean, you see Tom Moore still down in Arizona. Tom was with us for a couple weeks in 2012. Got to know him a little bit. And you still see Tom down there. So either you got to retire early, or you're never fully retired. And uh, when Dean and I talked. I was ecstatic that he wanted to, to come back. It really, really helps going through this for the first time. Somebody you know, you trust. You know, he, he has a shared vision. He's very adaptable. Because that, that's part of the issue, too, when you take over and you're going to change schemes. You know, you're, you don't want to just rip it down the studs and say, hey, we we're, you know, throw away this season. We're, we got we to gotta shift to a, whatever narrative you want to put on personnel or schematically. Dean can adapt. He's done that at every stop. No, di no different than how I see it offensively. So that was a huge hire for us.